Uh, Jasmia, as uh, you heard in the commercial just a few minutes back, is an award-winning singer. She won the 2015 Monk Award. She won the 2013 Sarah Vaughan International Jazz Vocal Competition. And she's in town. Really excited to have her in town. She's uh, performing tonight, two shows tomorrow as part of the Izzy Asper Jazz Performance Series. And uh, she's brought her own band in town, and she came by the studio to have a little conversation. So, Jasmine, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, <laughs> first time in Winnipeg. Yes. Welcome to Winnipeg. Thank you. And it's we greeted very you. Cold. We greeted you with our best weather ah, possible. It's October. Horrible. It's fall. It's <laughs> snow. <laughs> it was snowing out. Yes. Not too long ago. Yeah. I know, but it's not anymore. We drove up to the station, and you you, you saw the leaves on the ground. Yes. And you say, "Oh, it feels like fall now." Mm -hmm. So you feel better. Yes. Like get hot tea and. You're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully so the stage is not that cold. Hopefully what? <laughs> hopefully the stage isn't that cold. No, no, it'll be hot. Okay, good. It's gonna, you'll be warming it up for sure. <laughs> so let, let's, before we talk, you know, we're going to talk about the concert and talk about your album. Um, uh, briefly tell us about, uh, our listeners, about your background in music, where you came from, and when you first started singing. Okay. Um, so I originally started singing in the church back home. My father and my grandfather, my mother and my grandmother are all pastors. And well, my grandfather is the pastor, and um, my family are evangelists from the Baptist church. Um, and I started singing when I was three years old in the choir. I was the only child singing in the adult choir with the big face and the big mouth and <laughs> <laughs> screaming to the top of my lungs. Um, but it was fun. I remember doing that, and everybody was always proud of me. And um, one of the things that my parents always said to me, when you sing for God, make sure that you really believe and know what you're singing um, and, and make sure that you carry that reverence and that honor for God and be serious about it and don't get up there and play. And they had to tell me that because I'm a three-year-old child mm -hmm. with this you know, great ability to just sing really loudly and probably not completely in tune, but I really had a strong voice and it was what I wanted to do and I enjoyed doing it. Um, not be just because my parents praised me for it, but I had fun doing it. I enjoyed it. Um, and then from there, my life, you know, went on. As I was in elementary school, I would sing in choir and the little music theater classes. Um, and then intermediate school, same thing, musical theater. I even um, joined the band where I started to play trumpet. Um, and I danced as well, and I was like the only dancer who would sing while I was dancing. Mm. Um, and then in, in high school, I went to um, a public school at first, and I joined choir and musical theater there. And it didn't really work for me. Like I was being bullied, and I didn't like the area, and... I was very famous for my voice, popular, if you will, for my voice in high school um, and my ability to sing and mm -hmm. dance and, you know, be very artistic. Something that should be celebrated instead yes. of... I was beat bullied. down yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah. So I went to a um, performing arts high school, Booker T. Washington Performing and Visual Arts School, and I enjoyed myself so much there because everybody was just weird, just like me. <laughs> 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 you know, there were people with blue hair and, you know, pink and green mm -hmm. fingernails and... Like crazy clothes, you know, cowboy boots and stockings. And I enjoyed just finding myself and trying different styles of dress, different anthropology, different ways of doing my hair, different ways of singing. And singing in the hallway was not illegal. You don't go to detention for being loud and mm. funny and for expressing fun. expressing yourself. And yeah. Mm. And I really needed that. Um, mm. And that helped me to, like, going to Booker T. Washington helped me to become who I am today, really, like being able to be in a school which was, you know, mostly focused on arts. I got mm -hmm. to see what welders and people who were interested in interior design and um, digital design even and jewelry and yeah. all types of, you know, different people who were my age who were expressing themselves with their art. I got I got more encouraged to be able to express myself with my art, mm -hmm. and that's where I found jazz music. So yeah, let's let's talk about that because you, you jazz. Um, I've watched interviews with you before, and you talk mm -hmm. about how Sarah Vaughan is the voice that captured you. I mean, you know, we, there's voices when you think about jazz. There's Ella, there's Billy, there's yeah. Lena Horne, there's Nina Simone. What mm -hmm. was it about Sarah Vaughan's voice that captured you more, say more than the others? Mm. Um, her sassiness. That was her, her name. Yeah, exactly. Sassy. <laughs> and it was she was very sassy. Mm -hmm. And her tone and her timbre 
and her personality in the music and how she told the story really like captured me because at that time I was very still very gullible and and green and I hadn't really lived a life outside of the nest outside of where you know I was born um but I was also very because of the reverence that I had for gospel music because that is the way that I grew up knowing music my personality was not uh it was kind of diminished I didn't get a chance to really you know augment and express my feelings completely naturally because of the seriousness behind the gospel music that I had to have reference for, mm-hmm. right? Um, going to the arts magnet school helped me just to like be more expressive um, and just exuberant in my style of expression and not necessarily be like a mouse and, you know, you know, meek mm-hmm. and not really eager to just be who I am. And Sarah pulled that out of me. She was one of the persons who pulled it out of me. And, you know, I would see her, you're not the kind of a boy for a girl like me. And like how she expressed that through song and just how vibrant Mm -hmm. she was. Every time she expressed her story through the song, it made me want to do that. And so I became the like the the Sarah Sarah Vaughn protege, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't sing like myself for a while because I was so obsessed with her style and. And, you know, but I think that's common. I mean, whether you're a singer, whether you're an instrumentalist, there's always somebody, you know, that you mm-hmm. hear that you say, you know, that's who I want to emulate. Yeah. I want to be that person until you find your own voice. Right. Exactly. I mean, ironically, that was sort of the first big competition you won. Right. Yeah. The Sarah Vaughan yeah. competition. Right. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then the monk competition after that, a couple mm-hmm. years later. What's it, what was it like? I mean, you getting up there and singing, and, you know, you're being judged in a different way or in a competition mm-hmm. as opposed to an audience. Right. Um. For me, it wasn't that different because I I looked at it. So I'm a very competitive person just naturally. Um, I played football in high school, in junior high school, not high school, in junior high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I played basketball. I I was just always super competitive. Musical theater, I was super competitive. I wanted to be, play this role and take this part. And, you know, know, I played free safety. I wanted to be able to, you know, (laughs) tackle people and, you know. Um, and, and that carried on into my music as well. So the way that I thought about how I could win a competition was not, oh, I have to be the best. For me, it was like, my gift is already here. I already know that I can sing exceptionally well because people say it all the time. And I grew up with a family who everybody in the family could sing. So I know that my talent exists. Let me focus on what my message is to the people and just create a space where I'm comfortable and I could be myself. And the only way I knew how to do that was making that competition my stage versus thinking about it as a competition. So be the best you. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna wear my hair the way I wear it on a performance. I'm gonna dress the way I dress in a performance and I'm gonna treat this competition as is. this is my audience and they're coming to see my show versus Oh, I gotta beat all these other singers. I gotta be better. That was mm-hmm. never my my answer. I don't really like competitions because of that. You mm-hmm. know, I feel like every every artist has a different journey, and we should be able to each express ourselves. You know, if everyone sounded like me, the world would be boring as hell because mm-hmm. no one it, there. It, it's not as eclectic as it is now. It wouldn't be as eclectic as it is now, where you just have pop and jazz and reggae and R and B and hip hop and soul and you know, bluegrass and whatever, Mm -hmm. merengue, you have so many different cultures and that's what makes the world unique versus everyone sounding alike. And I think competitions make us feel like we have to sound like something, you know, but the good thing about the competition is that I'm here on this radio interview with you now. (laughs) That's (laughs) true. Yeah, it's a stepping stone, right? I mean, it gives you that, you know, you get the publicity from it, you get the name, the recognition, and it helps you with that, right? And that's prominent for my career. Yeah. So I love it and I hate it at the same time, you know. Um, But it it definitely brought me into this world of jazz Mm -hmm. and, you know, learning about pops and Louis Armstrong. I had a teacher who gave me a CD while I was at Booker T. And he said, you need to listen to these people. Now that you like Sarah Vaughn, that's Mm -hmm. beautiful. That's great. But here are some other. What about Etta Jones and Etta James? Sister Rosetta Tharp. Yes. I love Rosetta (laughs) Tharp, you know. Um, which is why one of the songs on the album, um, Up Above My Head, is there, because that's her song. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was rewritten by um, Kurt Elling, uh, not Kurt Elling, I'm sorry, Kurt Franklin. 
Oh yeah, Kirk Franklin. Yeah, yeah. gospel um, singer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And and you know that's on the album because there are a lot of gospel singers who I grew up with and appreciate my music, and I wanna I wanted to have something you know for them as well. They don't necessarily listen to straight ahead or contemporary jazz, mm-hmm. but I wanted to have something you know with my twist on it that would appeal to that audience as well. So. It's a lot. It's a mm, lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm in conversation with Jasmia Horn. She's in town to perform tonight and tomorrow. She's doing an afternoon and an evening show at the Radio uh, Center. You can go to RadioJCC.com for more information and tickets. She's brought her own band with her as well. It's a quartet Yes. you brought with you. Going to be doing stuff from your social call? From social call? Yes. From that album? And mm-hmm. possibly some new... Yeah. Music from the up and coming, the sophomore album as you're, well. You were telling me before we went on air that you've got a brand new album you've already recorded. It's yes. coming out maybe sometime in next spring. Yes. And it's all originals. Yes, that's Yay. very true. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited about it because I got to work with some really wonderful musicians. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's it's time for me to put my complete voice. You've only heard the audience, the world has only heard 50% of me because... Um, an arrangement is not, it's me, but it's, it isn't my composition, you know. Um, it's, there's a difference between being able to speak 100% of how I feel about a situation versus being able to, it's like, um, it's like mashed potatoes, you know. You make them or you warm them up. You know, (laughs) and a social call is like the Uh warmed up mashed potatoes. It's great because it got a Grammy nomination and that's beautiful. And you got to perform at the Grammys too. Yes, exactly. You actually performed that tune we just played. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the new album is a new, it's it's not mashed potatoes warmed over. It's new potatoes. It's fresh. Fresh, Mm -hmm. you know. Whipped and I'm nice excited. with some cream yes. and some butter. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of dill and ah, garlic, you know. Right. <laughs> I'm excited to present yeah. my soul. Well, basically. I would urge you, you know, and just, just off the cuff, sing at least one of those tunes, you know. We want to see that happen yeah, you too, it's right? Possible. It's, it's possible. It's possible. Very possible, yeah. Okay, very possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, fingers crossed. Yeah. Anyway, I'm coming to the Sunday afternoon show. Thank Looking you. forward to that one. Thank you. So you can... Uh, I uh, honestly, if if you want to go see an amazing uh, singer band, go check it out. She's performing tonight, and she's also performing uh, two shows tomorrow, uh, two o'clock and seven o'clock, yes. I believe, are the time. So you can go to radiogcc.com for tickets, and also just go show up at the door, take your chances, and show up at the door, and there may be a few seats left. Yep. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Really, really, yeah, really nice to have you in the studio. Yeah, it's been have fun. fun this weekend. Yes, I wish I will. maybe come back in the summer. I would love come back in the to summer. come back in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get you some cold lemonade instead of hot Thank tea. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you're listening to The Wide World of Classical Music. My name is Michael Walsh, your host. <laughs>